Right, so hey guys and welcome to another Flask tutorial. Today's tutorial we're going to be learning how to pretty much serve up a static folder that exists in our directory and also we're going to learn how to post content on our website dynamically. So in the last tutorial we learned about how to render out HTML templates but we only learned about how to um, render out kind of static templates. So in this tutorial we're going to be learning how to use um, dynamic templates and pretty much grab information from the python file and then serve it in our html file. So first off what I'm going to go ahead and do is open up visual studio code and then I'm going to open up the my website folder which pretty much stores all the files for my website and my web server. So I'm going to grab it and then um, drag it in here. Cool. So now um, if you guys haven't already watched part one and part two of this tutorial it's going to be linked in the description so I recommend you guys watch those short tutorials first because this is all linked and it will make more sense if you watch those first. If you already have a bit of knowledge about Flask you can carry on watching this. So first off what I'm going to do is zoom in a bit so that it's easier for you guys to see. Cool. So what we have going here is the app.py file which pretty much has the blueprint to the different routes that we have on our web server and then we have a separate app to blueprint file or app underscore blueprint.py file but which pretty much stores the different routes we have on our web server and then it stores the render function for rendering the different html files that we have so in the last tutorial that's what we did we pretty much rendered some static html files to the browser so what we're going to be doing today is first off we're going to be actually creating a static folder destination on our web server so what do i mean by that so technically what i mean is by default, if I go ahead and run Flask, so I'm going to go ahead and open up CMD. I'm going to go in my directory, so CD desktop and my website. And in here, I'm going to do set flask underscore debug equals one. Now I'm setting this up because um, I don't want to keep refreshing the server every time I make a change to my app.py or any other related files. If I enable debugging, Flask automatically detects those changes. So what I'm going to do next is type in flask run and then it should pretty much start running the web server on the address right here. So my local machine on port 5000. So I'm going to open up Chrome and then I'm going to run my file or the link that I have. And as you see, we are greeted to our index.html page because that's the initial forward slash root. So we have this. So we're not going to be obviously making the templates folder public because why would we want the users to view the these files in here because they, they are meant to be served according to the link that the user types into the URL bar. So we're not going to be making this um, folder public. This can stay private because that's private information only the server needs to know about. So we're going to go ahead and create another folder for, okay, we're not going to create it inside templates. We're going to be creating it in our main directory for my website. And I'm going to call this directory images. So assuming that our website is going to have different sort of images for our products, because this is sort of like a store website that we're creating just for the sake of this tutorial. So obviously products are going to have images. So we need an images folder where we store images of our products. So I'm going to go ahead and Chrome and type in t-shirt um, and then we'll just grab, uh, let's just grab a t-shirt image from somewhere here. So let's just go with, let's just go with this one for now. So I'm going to go ahead. Okay. I can't really right click there for some reason. I'm going to go ahead and save this image as, and then I'm going to go to my website and then the directory that I just created, which is called images and it's in my website. So I'm going to go ahead and save it over there. And this extension is JFIF. So you need to remember the extension of the image JFIF. So JPEG. So save that up. And now that you're done, you need to go back to your app.py file where you are initializing your flask object and you need to pass in an argument. So the argument you're actually going to pass in is called, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. it's called comma, a comma in there to pass an argument. And the argument is going to be static folder equals to, and then the name and the directory of your folder. So I'm going to go in my current directory by typing in dot forward slash. That just means we're in our current directory. And then I'm going to make the images folder available. So now that I've done that, as soon as the Flask server restarts, we need to specify what content we're looking for. So the image we have in that folder is actually called images JFIF. So if I actually go ahead and type in that, we're able to see it. But by default, we wouldn't be able to see it. Now that we've made this folder available, we are able to access the different files that are inside. 
but if I just type in the name of the directory itself, nothing will show up because it's not allowed to show the contents of that directory. It's only allowed to show the content if the name is directly accessed. So if I type in images.jfif, which is the direct link to this image in that images folder, that's the only time it's going to work. Cool. So now that we've learned how to make a static folder available to our clients, what we're going to go ahead and do is learn how to render out dynamic pages. So I'm going to go back to my default page, which is the straw right here. So let's assume we have a section on this index.html page which shows the user the most popular products that are being sold on the website. And then it will show the user the name of the product, the size of the product and then the price since it's merchandise, so clothing. So what I'm going to do is go ahead into my app.app.blueprint.py file which is where all the routing is. Now obviously the routing for my index page is right here. So this is where we're going to be dealing with the information. But before that, we're going to go ahead and create a quick variable, which is pretty much going to act as a dummy database, which is going to store the information about our products. Now the information is going to be read from this variable. It's going to be a list type, which is going to store a dictionary of different product informations. So what we're going to do first is type in variables, just, just so we know what's going on. And then in there, we're going to type in popular products. So we're going to create an array called popular products. And in that array, we're going to have a set of different dictionaries. So my first dictionary, the name of the product is going to be, let's say, Johan Gudino t-shirt. So I'm going to make it really basic. Then maybe we have another another key value pair in there called size, oops, size, where my size is going to be set to small for this product. And then another key value pair, which is going to include the price. So price and the price is going to be, let's just say five for now. Now also we need to include an image link in here so that we can grab the image later. So I'm going to do a key value pair for an image. So the key is going to be called image and then the value is going to be the link to the image. So the link to the image would be images folder. And then what was the name of it again? It was images the FIF. Now I'm going to set the same image that I downloaded for all of my products. If you guys want different images, you guys have to change this image link that is specified in here. So that's this whole dictionary that we've just created in our array is only for one product. So that's for the product called Johan Godino t-shirt, which is a size small. Now I'm going to create two more products in here. So I'm going to copy the first line and then paste it twice. Now make sure that you have commas in here because that's the separator for each dictionary that is created in our array. So it needs to have a comma as a separator. Now I'm going to keep the titles the same, but I'm going to change the size on this one to medium. And then I'm going to change the size on the last product to large. And then we're going to change the pride prices site slightly as well. So I'll make this 10 because it's a medium, a bit expensive, but it's fine. And then 15 because it's a large. So we've pretty much got an array going here called popular products and we've got dictionaries in there. So each dictionary holds information about a specific product. Cool. So now that we have our little database going, what we're going to do is actually learn how to grab this information and then render it out on our index.html page without having to physically type it in. So first off, what you want to do is where you're rendering the template, you want to pass in a new argument and call it popular products and then equals that to the variable or the list we just created, which was called popular products right here. So now whenever we run this index.html file, this popular products array is going to be available to us in the index.html file. So in the actual index file, the, the popular products array that we've just created up here is going to be available. And the name of that variable is set to popular products, obviously. Now you can change this to products or anything you like, but I'm going to go with the name popular products because it's just um, relevant. Cool. So now that we're done with that, what I'm going to do is go ahead in my templates folder and then open up my index.html file because that's the file that we're working on and it's going to be serving the different products that we have. So if I open it up in here, now as of now, it only has Johan store and best merge in the game. Pretty cringe, but that's fine. So I'm going to refresh. We have an error, obviously, because, okay, let's see what the error is. I'm going to go back to app.blueprint and let's see, what are you saying? Okay, I don't think it has refreshed since the last time we've saved it. So I'm going to go ahead and run it again. Refresh. Okay, so it is working fine. Cool. So this is what we have. We just have Johan store and best merge in the game which is a pretty static website now we're going to be adding on the products that we saved in our popular products 
array. We're going to be reading all the products from there and then adding them to this file right here without typing it in manually. So to do so, what we're going to do is we're going to create a center tag first, which is not good practice, but hey, it's I'm not an HTML tutorial we're doing here. So products, and then this section is going to mark the product section. So if I go ahead and refresh the page, I'll show you what I just did. It's just created a product section right here. Now under this title product is going to be all the popular products. Actually, let's just call this popular product. So popular products. And now what I'm going to do under there is going to be starting a loop. So in this HTML file, we can actually run code that is going to be run by our Flask engine. So the Flask engine can interpret this code and pretty much do dynamic stuff instead of just doing static stuff with it. So we're going to start a for loop. So whenever we want to write code, we want to use um, curly braces and percentage sign and one in the start, one in the end. And then you can write your code in there. So I'm going to write for product in popular oops, popular products. Now, if you remember, if we go back to app.blueprint, we passed in this popular products argument right here, which is storing the popular products array, which is why we can access it in here. We can access the popular products array because we passed it in there. Now, we don't use the normal format, which have, which would have been using a colon. We need to specify where this loop ends, actually. So we need to create an end for this loop, which is why we're going to add another code block by doing curly braces and percentage signs in the start and end. And then we're going to say end for, which means end the for loop. Now, all the instructions that are going to be run inside the loop are going to be between the start for loop and the end for loop. So I'm going to go ahead and create an H3 element in there, which is going to hold the product name. So I'm going to type in product name. And then in here, what we're going to be extracting is going to be the product name that we gather from our product object. So for each product object in our popular products array, we're going to grab the name and display it in here. So whenever you're displaying a variable, you need double curly braces in the start and double curly braces in the end. And then you can specify the variable name. So I'm going to go with product dot name, obviously, because product is the object we're accessing and then dot name is the name of the product. So if I show you right here, we did that before dot name is the name of the product dot size would be the size and then dot price would be the price and dot image would be the image directory. Cool. So we have gathered the product dot name. Now let's save this up and refresh to see how we're doing. So as I said before, popular product it says, and now it's rendering pretty much all the product names from our list. So it says product name, Johan Godino t-shirt, and then it says it three times because we pretty much have three products in our popular product array. Now, obviously the names are the same because we haven't changed them up. So let's go ahead and display the sizes and prices too. So I'm going to, for the prices, before we actually do prices, actually, we can show the image. So it would be nice if we would show the image of the product after the product name. So let's do image and set the source, which of the image. So we set the source of the image to product.img because .img means we're accessing the value of our img key which pretty much is the directory to the image so if i go back here as you see dot img is the key and then that's the link to the image so directory to the image let's save this and refresh to see if that works and as you see right here that works flawlessly as well now all the images are the same because we've added the same image for all three products now when this when it comes to size and prices it's going to show you different sizes and prices because each product has a different size and a different price so let's go ahead and do that we're going to go ahead and display the size and the and the price so for this to display the size i'm going to do an a h4 and then i'm going to do double curly braces in the start and end because it's a variable that i'm trying to display and then i'm going to do product dot size because i want to display the size and then i'm going to go ahead and copy this and replace the h4 with a h5 because i want it to be a slight bit smaller than the h4 and then i'm going to do product dot price cool and then after that our loop will successfully end because it's pretty much showing all the product details for each product that we have in our popular products array so if i refresh this right now as you see right here it says product name johan Godino t-shirt a nice little image small and then five pounds and then it says medium and 10 pounds large and then 15 pounds now we need to add size and then price here so that it makes more sense 
So what we're going to do is add some static information. So instead of just showing the product size value, we're going to say size and then whatever value is grabbed from our array. And then we're going to say price and then whatever value is grabbed from our array. And obviously we need a pound sign as well for it to make sense. So if I refresh this now, as you see right here, as you see right here, we have our static element that we added, which is size and colon. And we have another static element, price and price colon and the pound sign. So as you see, we have a decent looking, or I wouldn't say decent looking, but the hyper markup language version of a product store running. So technically, when you're doing this in a realistic scenario, you would have the data for all of these products in an actual MySQL database. We could do a tutorial on that in the future, but for this tutorial, this should be fine because we're just using a temporary data structure where we're using a array to store different dictionaries of products. So that was it for today's tutorial, guys. Hope you have learned something new and you can use this to implement your own websites. Instead of using a data structure like an array, you can try using MySQL. If you guys liked the video, please make sure to drop a like, comment, subscribe and share because sharing is quite important.